please welcome to the stage Vice President of Corporate Social Impact and Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer Don Jones. Hello, good morning. If we could have everyone take their seats. Welcome to our distinguished guests. I do have to say as an ASU alum, I'm a little bit partial, but can we please give that band a round of applause? They were amazing. Thank you. I got to meet them earlier. So as you all heard, I'm Dawn Jones. And as an as a Arizona native, this is really exciting for me. I'm truly honored to have you here for this event and truly honored to bring up our next guest. So stay tuned and you'll hear about the, our next guests that are coming up. Thank you so much. We have a great program for you. Please welcome the Mayor of Chandler, Kevin Hartke. Well, good morning, Arizona, and good morning, Chandler. On behalf of the Chandler City Council, our, our city, I want to welcome President Biden, our governor, our federal leg legislation and delegation, as well as Arizona leaders here to Chandler. Our city is known as a city of innovation. We are a safe city. We are a clean city and a prosperous city with great access to education, job training, and inspirational opportunities to attain the American dream. Chandler and the Valley of the Sun have a vast and unique ecosystem of semiconductor manufacturing and technology companies unparalleled by any region in the world. And Intel and Chandler here have a 45-year relationship supporting the most complex manufacturing process in the world in a clean, reliable, and efficient way. And we're grateful to the many partners representing today that will make this possible. We believe this announcement today will further enhance our country's economic and national security interests. Americans benefit from the CHIPS Act as leaders safeguard our, nationals, our nation's interest and provide global access to technology that produces thriving economies for the betterment of all. So once again, on behalf of the city of Chandler, we welcome our president. Please welcome to the stage governor of Arizona, Katie Hobbs. Hi, good morning, everyone. It is so great to be here and welcome you all here. And for those of you visiting from outside of our state, welcome to Arizona. As you traveled here to Intel's beautiful Ocotillo campus in Chandler, some of you may have sensed a certain energy happening throughout the Grand Canyon State. It's the promise of opportunity and innovation. It's the spirit of collaboration and partnership and it's the chance to celebrate an Arizona institution, Intel, a big company that makes little chips that drive our everyday life, and a company that has been a leader in Chandler and in Arizona's business community for decades. Today's announcement marks another critical investment in the strength and security of our country. As the need for American-made technology becomes greater each day, we must ensure that we have the capability to meet those demands and continue on the path to independence and prosperity. As we have shown, Arizona is ready, willing, and able to lead the nation in developing cutting edge technologies, growing businesses and creating jobs, and being the center for made in America semiconductor manufacturing. Since January, 2020, Arizona has attracted over 35 announced semiconductor industry expansions. That translates into over 13,000 jobs and over $65 billion in investment, making Arizona the leader in the nation for new semiconductor jobs, investment, and supplier expansions. That wouldn't be possible without having the workforce to get it done. 
Here in Arizona, we are ensuring Arizona workers have the skills necessary to take advantage of these once in a generation opportunities, training the best workforce this country has to offer. These new investments have made Arizona a leader in training the semiconductor workforce companies like Intel, that, that companies like Intel need. With workforce accelerators and apprenticeship programs, including the state's first ever semiconductor apprenticeship program, Arizonans will be ready for the good paying jobs this incredible investment and others will bring. But none of this would be possible without strong partnerships from industry. And I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Intel's role in building Arizona's semiconductor ecosystem here in the Valley and for setting the bar for good paying jobs across our state. We are leading, Ariz we are leading America's economic future because of our high skilled workforce, dynamic economy, and innovative companies like Intel, who for over four decades has been a stalwart of our state's economy. But today, we aren't here to talk about the last 40 years. We're here to discuss the next 40. With this Critical Chips Investment Act, Intel is solidifying its place as a leader in advanced manufacturing, continuing to fuel our state's success. They are signaling to the rest of the world that Arizona is the place to invest in these critical technologies and that Arizona is the choice to build the economy of the future. This is just the beginning of decades of continued success and innovation that is happening here in the Silicon Desert. On behalf of the entire state, I want to thank Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger and the entire team for choosing Arizona again and again. This is an exciting next chapter in our partnership. I also want to thank Senator Sinema and Kelly and those in our congressional delegation who supported it for your leadership in passing the CHIPS Act. Thank you also to Secretary Raimondo, the Department of Commerce and the CHIPS Office for working with my administration and industry in the state to quickly deploy these investments. And to President Biden, these investments will have a profound impact on the people of Arizona and make so many dreams a reality. Thank you for fighting to revive, the American, uh, revive American manufacturing and thank you for helping us do it right here in Arizona. In our state, we have the five C's, cotton, copper, cattle, citrus, and climate. And with the CHIPS Act, you are not only making, Ar Ar making CHIPS Arizona's sixth C, you're leaving an impact for generations to come. Congratulations again to everyone. Please enjoy your time here in the Grand Canyon State. Please welcome Representative Greg Stanton. All right. Good morning. What a great day for Chandler the East Valley and all of Arizona, look around, look how far we have come. Back in 1980, when this was still a small farming town, the very first chips came off the production line at Intel's Chandler campus. That first fab put Arizona on the map for advanced manufacturing. And over these last four decades, Arizona and the East Valley have grown up around it. But you know what? Not that many years ago, the Phoenix metropolitan area got hit harder than any other region in the country by the Great Recession. I know, I had just become mayor of Phoenix at that time. We knew that to recover, we had to reshape the fundamentals of the Arizona economy, one rooted in innovation, and we did it. Now, our state of Arizona is leading the country in job growth, in tech, advanced manufacturing, it is one of the greatest economic comeback stories and none of it happened by accident. Republican and Democrats at every level of government working together, we worked to, with a shared vision for the kind of economy we want for here in Arizona. Investment in higher education, investment in the biosciences and STEM, we focused on attracting startups and entrepreneurs, and we made sure we had the critical infrastructure 
particularly water infrastructure, to grow quickly and sustainably. That's why water is such a big part of the bipartisan infrastructure law. It takes a lot of water to run these fabs. And I've worked closely with Intel and Chandler Mayor Kevin Harkey to invest federal dollars in water reclamation, recycling every drop used here at Intel. Because good water planning and good economic development are one in the same here in Arizona. But to really put But to really put Arizona and America on the path to success, to secure our supply chain, to compete and win at, on the global stage, we needed a once in a generation strategic investment, and that is the Chips and Science Act. I knew from the beginning, the Chips Act was great for the United States, but no state in the country would better benefit from the Chips Act than us here in Arizona. So I worked with industry leaders like Intel CEO Paul Gelsinger, colleagues on both sides of the aisle to push through this critical bill through the House of Representatives. And on the Senate side, no one, no one was more instrumental than Arizona's own Mark Kelly, Senator Mark Kelly. He couldn't be here today, but let's give him a big round of applause. The CHIPS Act has unlocked hundreds of billions of dollars in private sector investment around the country. Look around, all of these cranes, all of these great union workers working around the clock to stand up these two fabs. A $20 billion investment in Intel. Thanks for the great work of these uh, incredible union workers. Here's what those investments mean. 6,000 construction jobs, 3,000 permanent good paying jobs in the factory, not just here at Intel, at the supplier entities as well. More than 100 chip related businesses across the, across the state. Just think. A local kid now can graduate right down the street from Chandler High School, go right down the street to ASU, their world-class engineering school, or train to be a technician at Maricopa Community Colleges and launch a fulfilling career here at Intel, creating chips that power the most advanced technology on the planet. That is an incredible success story here in Arizona. <clears throat> As a representative in Congress for Chandler, I couldn't be more proud to welcome President Biden and Secretary Armando here to Arizona. I was in the room many, many, many times when Secretary Armando came to the Capitol to make the pitch for the CHIPS Act. I saw her in action, and I can say this, the CHIPS Act would not have passed Congress without Secretary Armando's leadership. And I want to acknowledge that. Secretary Armando, thank you for being such a powerful advocate. And President Biden, he has made winning the global economic competition a top priority. The president chose to come here to the East Valley, to Chandler, to make this announcement. He understood how important Arizona's success in semi semiconductor manufacturing is to our national economy and our national security. Mr. President, thank you for prioritizing Arizonans. Your being here today is, the af is an affirmation of the work we have been putting in for decades. That is why today is a great day for Arizona. Thank you. Please welcome the mayor of Phoenix, Kate Gallego. The CHIPS Act is making an incredible difference in the state of Arizona. We're importing jobs and exporting high-tech goods. I'm Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego, and it's a pleasure to welcome President Biden back to the Metro Phoenix region, especially on such a historic day. Today stands for an as a great example of how the president is delivering for our country and specifically for the Valley of the Sun. The CHIPS Act is bringing once-in-a-generation opportunities to our community, furthering equity in the workforce and strengthening our local economy. Thank you to the U.S. Congress and Secretary Raimundo and her great team at Commerce. When the Biden-Harris administration named Phoenix a workforce hub, we answered the call. There's been a lot of work to get where we are today, from providing tuition assistance to leveraging our academic partnerships to creating accessible career pathways. Employers now have a resource within the city of Phoenix. In January, the Phoenix Workforce Board became the first board in the country to sponsor a registered apprenticeship program in the industry, 
a program that won't just benefit Phoenix, but the entire Valley, giving residents the chance to launch a brand new, exciting career and earn a living where they can raise a family. We've had amazing help from the philanthropic community, from the Community Foundation to Helios, who want to work with us to make sure we meet the moment. As mayor, I've had the chance to meet with inspiring individuals who've taken a new route to a career in chip manufacturing. Just two weeks ago, when the vice president was in town, I got to introduce vice, the vice president to a group of Phoenix iron workers who said, and I quote, made $8,000 in, $8, in their first three weeks and never looked back. It makes such a difference for my city. When the carpenters are hiring people who deserve a second chance, my city is safer. When I meet with the local sheet metal workers and they tell me they're buying the building next door to train more apprentices, it helps revitalize neighborhoods. CHIPS is making a difference in so many different ways, building a foundation so that families can grow our economy from the middle out and bottom up, just as the president envisions. With today's investment and so many more on the way, I know that more of these stories will come to light. I can't wait to hear them and to tell them. And it's not just today. All right, you're gonna be in suspense. All right, we're back. <laughs> now that you've been in suspense, uh, I was at the Children's Museum of Phoenix earlier this month where Intel is partnering so that today's preschoolers can get an introduction to silicon and start on the path to discoveries that all of us here today can only imagine. This really is an investment that matters to our entire educational system. And frankly, that's our secret sauce. We may have given away the secret with the ASU marching band being here, but we wouldn't be here without our incredible apprenticeship programs, without ASU, the community college, and all the education partners along the way. It really is our people that mean that that have delivered this announcement today and, and why we have this great success in Arizona. I want to thank you to President, I want to thank President Biden and US Congress for helping our residents realize such a brighter future. And congratulations to Intel, a powerful member of the global leading ecosystem that is transforming Phoenix and Arizona. It makes me proud both as a Valley Mayor and as chair of our region's government association. So much promise is ahead. Let's continue this successful trajectory. The future demands it. Thank you. Please welcome Aaron Butler, president of the Arizona Building Trades Council. Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for coming. Um, today's announcement is, is special to me. I actually started my career on this plant back in 1994, uh, 30 years ago, when it was just Fab 12. Um, being formerly a construction worker, this site has uh, provided livelihood for my family for that long, since 1994. It's allowed me to raise uh, three children and uh, um, have everything that they needed, good benefits, um, good health care. And now as the head of the Arizona Building and Construction Trades, I spend every day working to make sure Arizonans have access to the same types of opportunities that I had growing up to build a good middle-class life. Now, thanks to President Biden, the most pro-worker, pro-union president in history, and Intel, thousands of union jobs. <laughs> thousands of union jobs are being created in Arizona, and we're expanding access to union apprenticeship programs that will enable future generations to have even greater opportunities than I had. Today's announcement is about national and economic security and helping the United States lead the world in innovation. But more importantly to me, it's about the families and the young people that are eager for an opportunity and pathway to achieve the American dream. Because of the president's actions and today's historic CHIPS investment, thousands more families in Arizona will see that dream within reach. I'm grateful to Intel for the opportunities they've given me, and I'm grateful to President Biden for his leadership, for caring about the union workers of this city and this state, and for having the vision and the courage to invest in America again. Thank you, President Biden. The program will resume shortly.
please welcome Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day in Arizona, not just because of the weather. Uh, it's a huge day here at Intel. Intel major announcement. By the way, it's a big day in Ohio and New Mexico and Oregon also. In fact, in fact, it's a huge day for the entire country because today we mark one of the largest investments ever in our nation's history in semiconductor manufacturing. So I have to begin first by thanking all the workers, all of the folks who work hard day in and day out that make this possible. Yeah, I want to begin. I want to begin by starting with the building trades the hardworking men and women who, who b literally built this from the ground up. Thank you for your hard work. And of course, and of course, all the employees of Intel who are going to make the magic happen inside. Now, in a little while, uh, you're going to get the chance to hear from uh, my boss and our president, President Biden. And I'm often asked, you know, what's the president like? What's he like to work with, et cetera? One thing I can tell you is that he is obsessed with revitalizing American manufacturing. He believes it deep in his bones. And what he says, he says, I'm tired of being at the end of the supply chain. I'm tired of just buying things that we import from other countries. I want to make more in the United States of America. And that's what this is about. That's what this is about. And that's why investing in America, he believes in investing in America, investing in American people, workers, talent, and manufacturing, so American workers can once again lead the world in advanced manufacturing. And that's what today is all about. Because of the president's leadership, a year and a half ago, Congress passed on a bipartisan basis a once-in-a-generation Chips and Science Act, a $50 billion investment to usher in a new era of American leadership in advanced semiconductor manufacturing. And today, today, we are announcing our intention to invest $8.5 billion in Intel, America's champion <laughs> semiconductor company. That $8.5 billion investment will be the single largest grant that we make from the entire CHIPS program. And how appropriate in the American Champion Company. This investment will enable Intel to produce leading edge, the most sophisticated chips in the world that will power our economic and national security, power advanced technology, including artificial intelligence, the defining, gener the defining technology of our time. And that $8.5 billion of public money will incentivize over $100 billion of private capital investment from Intel. $100 billion marks one of the largest investments ever in the history of U.S. semiconductor manufacturing. This is huge. It's a watershed moment. And I want to thank the leadership of Intel, Pat Gelsinger, extraordinary CEO at the helm with his team. Thank you for your vision and thank you for your commitment to America. Now, last month I gave a speech and I said our goal as a country is to produce 20% of leading edge chips in the United States of America by the end of the decade. Today we produce none, zero. We're going to go from zero to 20% here in these facilities. Here and in Ohio, these facilities will make and package leading edge chips here in the United States of America. The truth is, you know this. We lead the world in the design of chips. We lead the world in the design of AI chips and AI and systems. And then we ship our designs to a couple companies in a couple countries in Asia. And we're utterly reliant. And that is not sustainable. It's not safe. 
it's not the it's not enabling us to be strong it's unacceptable and today we say we're changing the course we are changing that course and we're beginning a new course to revitalize the semiconductor industry, an industry that was started in the United States of America, and we're going to lead again in the United States of America, including Foundry, making the best chips in the world with American workers in the United States of America. And by the way, the best part, in the process of doing that, we'll make our country stronger, we'll make ourselves less dependent on a couple of companies far away in Asia. We'll make sure we have the chips we need for AI, national security, weapon defense systems. But the best part of it all, we will create tens and tens of thousands of high paying, family supporting jobs for American workers. So, it's an exciting day. It's an exciting day today. Uh, I want to thank Intel. I want to thank all the workers here. It's a, today, when we look back tech 10 years from now, we'll remember today is a day we make America safer, we make our supply chains more secure, and we'll ensure that the future of innovation is, an, is here in the United States. So thank you to my own team, who's worked day and night on the CHIPS Act. Thank you most of all to the President for getting the CHIPS Act passed. The CHIPS Act is protecting our economic and national security. And all of you here today, you're part of that American story. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage Vice President of Corporate Social Impact and Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer Don Jones. Wow, just wow. Look at this audience. Correct me, did I hear 8.5 billion? Can everybody stand up? That's a stand up and clap type moment. This is amazing. This is amazing. Thank you to our elected officials. Thank you to all the teams that have made this possible. We will ask that you continue to stand because now we will move to the pro uh, portion of our program where we will have the presentation of the colors by the Boy Scout Troop 285 and Girl Scout Troop 3025 along with the Star Spangled Banner. So if you turn your attention to the left here, um, this is where they will play for us and the presentation of the colors. Thank you. You may be seated. Our next guest will help us to honor this land's heritage and our commitment to moving forward with mindfulness and unity through a special blessing ceremony. Please join me in welcoming Gila River Indian Community Governor Stephen Rowe Lewis.
governor of the Gila River Indian community. And if you look right over here, well, beyond the buildings, <laughs> our reservation homelands of the Gila River Indian community, the Akimara Atham and Peeposh people, where we resided from time immemorial. And I'm so pleased to be here today with our neighbors and partners from Intel. I also want to recognize Councilwoman Lelena Jackson from the Gila River Indian community. And also my brother, uh, fellow tribal leader, Chairman Robert McGill from the Auction Indian community as well. Now the partnership that exists between the community and Intel is evident as we start today's program and in the programs and projects that we work on today. And as we start today's program, I want to acknowledge the lands, what we call our Atham Juvud, that we are on, our traditional lands of the Akrima Atham and Peeposh people. These are the lands that hold our history, our ancestors, our water, our Shudug, and our mountains. These are the lands that bore witness to our greatest challenges, but also offer us our greatest hope for the future. And as we start today's program, we want to do it in a way that honors our land, our culture, our ancestors, and this great state of Arizona. So we will start with a traditional basket dance performed by our Gila River basket dancers. This is a proud moment for the entire Gila River Indian community as our dancers start today's event in a good way, in a traditional way, in a sacred way. And welcome all of you here with an especially warm and heartfelt welcome to the president, to our president, President Joe Biden.
This is a day for celebration, so let's give them another round of applause. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if you would, please direct your attention towards the screen to the left for a quick video. These companies see what I see, that the future of the chip industry is going to be made in America. Intel is this country's champion chip company. This is a clear path forward for the U.S. It's the opportunity to drive systemic change in the most important aspect of our future, where the technology supply chains are. Please welcome Kayvon Asfarjani, Global Operations Officer at Intel. Thank you, Don. Hi, everyone. Good morning. All right. Folks, today is such an exciting day, moment for Intel. Our partners in the U.S. government and the American people, as we take a critical step forward in enabling semiconductor R&D manufacturing in the United States. I'm responsible for Intel's manufacturing, supply chain, and all construction projects around the globe. And by supply chain, I mean being trusted, being resilient, and being sustainable. This is a full circle moment for me. As three years ago, we announced our IDM 2.0 project right here in Arizona. When our CEO, Pat Gelsinger, asked me, Kayvon, where do we expand to support the growing demand for our internal and external foundry customers? Without hesitation, I said, we start right here in Arizona, and from there, we selected Ohio for our new mega factory, expanded our New Mexico site for advanced packaging, and accelerated our R&D investments in Oregon. As you can see here in Ocotillo, building a leading edge chip factory is like building a small city. I'm so proud of the 7,000 plus of our construction workers working hard every day and keeping this project on track. That's right, you're all making this happen every day. We greatly appreciate that. And once built, we fill these factories with thousands of the most advanced equipment on earth, requiring a diverse team of highly trained engineers, and technicians to deliver millions of chip every week. These employees are resilient, hardworking, and committed to minimizing our environmental footprint as we expand our capacity. Arizona is Intel's US manufacturing powerhouse. With four fabs in operation and two fabs under construction, producing more advanced logic chips than any other site in the US. And here in FAB 52, this is not, not this building behind us, this is, this is just a warm up. Right behind this building, that's when the action is happening. This is FAB 52, and we are going to be building 18A process technology in 2025. That is our most advanced process technology coming up, right around the corner. And beyond our Arizona, we have our project in New Mexico, is Intel leading edge advanced packaging manufacturing hub, and the only US high volume provider of advanced packaging, making Intel the only company that can provide an end-to-end -end manufacturing from fab all the way to the back end process here in Americas. This is very, very important. 
Oregon is the heart of Intel's leading edge semiconductor research and technology development and the largest semiconductor innovation cluster in the United States. And Ohio is forging the future in Intel's newest US investment, including two new leading edge chip factories that will produce the most advanced semiconductor processes in the United States as well. And folks, it only happens through close collaboration with the local state, federal government, or labor, or construction, academia, and a talented workforce. This is truly a team sport. And Intel, Intel is a great American company. And I want to say thank you to everyone on Team Intel. The team, the Intel workforce deserves all the credit for Intel being recognized as the American champion in this semiconductor industry. Yes, we are the American champion, folks. Absolutely. Very, very exciting. So on behalf of thousands of our Intel Foundry team members, I want to extend my sincere thanks to President Biden, Secretary Raimondo, the CHIPS office, all the electorate, elect, elected officials who have worked tirelessly to make today possible. We are grateful for all the partnership and all of our suppliers, all of the support infrastructure we have to provide this very, very important change of our unprecedented expansion of our operation and unprecedented investment to support America's future. I would like to now invite my good friend, Christy Pambianchi, Intel's Chief People Officer, to the stage. Christy, thank you. today as the chief people officer for Intel during this historic time. I have dedicated my career to creating opportunities for people to thrive. And I have learned early on that work plays a critical role in the quality of our lives, in our sense of accomplishment, and in the opportunities we create not only for ourselves, but for our families. Every day, we ask our employees to show up and help push the boundaries of innovation to solve the most complex challenges in the world, all in the grand pursuit of improving the lives of every person on the planet through technology. The Chips for America program will create thousands of jobs here at Intel. Our US investment will generate more than 10,000 Intel jobs, nearly 20,000 construction jobs, and ultimately support more than 50,000 jobs with suppliers and supporting industries. These are more than just jobs. They are an opportunity to play a part in strengthening our supply chain and in restoring American leadership in semiconductors. And we at Intel are so honored to be a part of that opportunity. And it is our responsibility to inspire and empower our employees to do their best work to keep America at the forefront, because leading edge chip factories are made by the people within them. We are building semiconductor talent pipelines through national, state, and local partnerships. America has the talent, and Intel is leading the way to ensure 
Intel is leading the way to ensure that we have the right skill sets in place, not only for Intel facilities, but for the industry and the broader ecosystem as well. Over the last five years, we have invested over $250 million in academic collaborations, including $50 million in partnership with the National Science Foundation and $50 million to fund the Semiconductor Education and Research Program in Ohio. Our two-week quick start programs in Arizona and Oregon are designed to spark interest in new career pathways into the semiconductor industry for underserved communities. And our digital readiness programs equip the current and future workforce with the appropriate skills to use technology impactfully and responsibly in an AI-fueled world. Through our AI for Workforce program, 27 colleges now offer two-year degrees in AI. And we at Intel have provided over 225 hours of AI content to community colleges at no cost. We've also trained tens of thousands of students through our AI for Youth program and our K through 12 Future Skills program. We are very committed to supporting our employees and those that they care about by providing affordable, accessible, and reliable family-friendly benefits. Because people should not have to choose between advancing their career and managing the high cost of childcare. Now, as a mother... <laughs> Now, I'm a mother of four myself, and I know the impact that this can make, which is why I am so proud of the benefits we offer to support our employees. We have adoption and surrogacy assistance. We have up to 12 weeks of bonding leave. We have discounted childcare programs, and we even have reimbursement for backup childcare. This sense of purpose and forward momentum isn't just about work. It's about improving our overall well-being and the opportunities that lie ahead for ourselves and our families. The work we're doing here carries the promise of generational impact. It's about elevating the American workforce to set the stage for success in 21st century careers and beyond. Thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure to hand it back to Don Jones. Thank you to Christy, Kayvon, our entertainment, all of our um, speakers to date to this point. This will conclude the first portion of our program. I will ask you again to take a look at the screen on the left, and after that, we will have a brief intermission. Thank you. Moore's Law is alive and well. It's a law of innovation, of commitment, of investment pouring into this technology. And we as a company, Intel, are gonna keep making it true. These fabs, these are the largest construction projects on Earth happening today to build the smallest things that have ever been built. God's gift to mankind was silicon, the most prevalent material on Earth. It was a proud day when I got to stand on the White House lawn when we signed into law the U.S. Chips Act. Pat Gelsinger, stand up. We need to get back to work making more chips in America. Nothing should be reliant on a single port, to a single country, a single place in the world. We need resilient access to supply chains and capacity in the right regions at the right time. We're going to rebuild Western manufacturing at scale. Intel is this country's champion chip company. 
It's an American champion company of a very huge role to play in this revitalization. And I believe we will be very, very successful. Please welcome to the stage CEO of Intel, Pat Gelsinger. Wow, what a day. What a fabulous moment. You know, and today is a victory for Americans' national economy, but also our national security. It's a victory for American innovation, and it's a victory for the American people and our collective future. Because in our modern world, everything relies on chips. Every aspect of humanity is going digital and relies on chips. And their production shapes the future of all of humanity. The world we know and the world we are creating for our generations to come, our kids and grandkids and their children, it is all built upon this magic of silicon. Which is why we are here today, to continue to invest in the transformative power of this amazing technology. By signing the US CHIPS Act, President Biden showed that we are committing to building this critical industry back on American shores. These investments, our investments, are powering the next great chapter of American innovation, the next great chapter of science and manufacturing technology. And the timing couldn't be more critical. We all remember that COVID provided us an incredible wake-up call, a wake-up call that shocked and disrupted our global supply chains. It choked our manufacturing lines. It kept essential products away from people when they needed them most. And all because one and two dollar semiconductor chips weren't available, manufacturing lines stopped. Make no mistake, fragile global supply chains are a threat not just to our economic but also to our national security as well. By coming together today, we are declaring that America will not surrender leadership to our competitors. We are choosing innovation over inaction. We are building a future with geographically balanced and resilient supply chains, right here in America, right here in Arizona. His historians will look back on this period as a once-in-a-generation defining moment, a moment to challenge our old assumptions and to drive fundamental structural changes for the future. America must lead the way into this new era by regaining our leadership, especially with the turbocharged acceleration that AI is providing to our world and its incredibly promising potential. And we will be ready to meet this next surge of semiconductor demand. All of us at Intel believe that restoring our nation's leadership in semiconductors is more than just an opportunity, more than just a responsibility. It's our calling. This is what we were built for as a company. This is what we do. And we have already announced plans to invest more than $100 billion in the US over a five-year period. I first walked through the doors of this iconic company as an 18-year-old kid with an associate's degree starting as a technician. I took the job. I took the job as Intel CEO to honor the Intel Trinity, the trio that puts silicon into Silicon Valley, Bob Noyce, Gordon Moore, and Andy Grove. And through the years, I've had the honor of witnessing firsthand, of learning at their feet, that this American excellence, this power of technology innovation, but the power and the role of American manufacturing. And our facilities have grown. We have the extraordinary Oregon, the Silicon Forest. 
We have the extraordinary Arizona, the Silicon Desert. <laughs> and the extraordinary New Mexico, the Silicon Mesa. And one of my proudest moments was standing beside President Biden in Ohio and beginning of a new chapter of American innovation at Intel. I can say that field of dreams is now an extraordinary construction site that's coming to life before your very eyes. We are so proud that President Biden and Secretary Raimondo believe in this vision of expanding U.S. chip making capacity and capabilities. And we are, I am grateful for this funding and the confidence and commitment that you are placing in us. Mr. President and Madam Secretary, we will not let you down. We're going to put every of these every one of these taxpayer dollars to work, and we are committed to delivering the silicon that powers our world while driving to the lowest possible environmental footprint and rebuilding resilience into our operations and value chain and supply chain, all while leading innovation for the world. It's fitting that we are standing here on an Intel construction site because these investments, right, these extraordinary commitments are going to build right here in America, right here in Arizona. You know, we're going to keep building and innovating new chips that power the future and help humanity to be a better place for our children and grandchildren. We're going to build stronger communities and local economies from Arizona to Ohio by creating nearly 80,000 jobs at Intel and our construction sites with suppliers and more. That's a lot of jobs. You should applaud that. Yeah. And we're going to continue to support our employees like uh, Tilden Dixon, a Native American, a member of the Sheet Metals Union, Local 359, and responsible for metal sheet detailing right here at Intel. And it's now my pleasure to have the introduction of Tilden and he will have the unique honor of introducing our president today. And we're gonna build more secure America. The CHIPS Act is just the kind of bold action that will get us there. And for all of these reasons and more, we applaud President Biden, his administration, Secretary of Commerce Raimondo, the bipartisan group of policymakers that came together to make the CHIPS Act a reality. And now, thank you and Tilden. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tilden Dixon, and I'm a proud second generation sheet metal worker and a member of Smart Local 359. I am also a Navajo Nation tribe member, and I grew up in a union household. <clears throat> Excuse me. My father, my uncles, my cousins are all sheet metal workers. I saw firsthand the great value of a good job with a livable, livable wages, health care, and pension benefits. Times were not always great with the ups and downs of construction, but my father taught me if you work hard and you have union brothers and sisters to lean on, you'll always get ahead. <clears throat> Thank you. I chose to follow his footsteps and join the local 359 in 2012. I served my apprenticeship and then secured a job at the Intel construction site where I've been for the last past six years. I was, it was a commitment to go to class and work a full-time job for many of years. I, but I've learned a lot and now I am a BIM coordinator at the construction site where I design 3D modeled routes that are used to construct Intel's semiconductor manufacturing fab tools. I love my job. I am currently saving so that one day, very soon, I can buy a house. But I'm not the only one who has, 
who has li whose lives have been transformed for the better. Thank you to President Biden's historic investments. There are now there are now hundreds of jobs, uh, hundreds of new jobs for the people of Arizona, who are building Intel's new cutting edge chip factories and building a building the future of, of America. <clears throat> I am so grateful and proud we have a president who has the understanding of, of importance, giving the opportunity like this to communities like ours and to millions of Americans like me. With that, I am great. I have not. <laughs> I now have the greatest honor and privilege to introduce the man who has provided this for us. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, Joe Biden. By the way, your dad is right about unions. Your dad is right. Unions built the middle class. Wall Street didn't. Unions built the middle class. So thanks, Tilden, for that introduction. And uh, union sheet metal worker, proud member of the Navajo Nation, you're going to be building the future here in Arizona. And Arizona is building the future. Thank you, Governor Hobbs. She had to leave, but uh, welcome me to the state and for your partnership all across the board. And thank you, Representative Stanton, for your dedication to the people of the 4th District and for the passport, anyway. <laughs> Get in. <laughs> While we couldn't be here today because the votes in Washington, I want to thank Senator Mark Kelly, who's doing an incredible job and the real champion from the announcement that we make here today. And Mayor, Mayor Kate, where, where's Kate? Thank you, Kate. You're an incredible mayor. You're doing a great job. And Mayor Chandler Hartke. And uh, I guess I'm technically in your city, right? Yes, sir. All right. I'll behave. I'll behave. <laughs> We're also joined by one of the brightest women I've ever men or women I've ever known, Gina Raimondo, our Secretary of Commerce. And I'm not joking about that. And Pat Gelsinger, CEO of Intel. Aaron Butler, President of Arizona Building Trades. What a combo, man. And other union leaders are here today. Thank you for your partnership and showing how we get big things done in America and we can do it again, again and again and again. I've asked Pat and many other business leaders this question, and I mean it sincerely. I met with the business roundtable. Please have a seat, by the way. You're all saying it. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you're still saying it. I apologize. I asked the question of the business roundtable, the biggest leaders of business in the, in, the, in the world, in the United States particularly. I asked them, when the United States decides to invest considerable resources in a new industry that we need to build, does that encourage business or does it discourage it? And the answer is overwhelmingly, it encourages it, overwhelmingly. Folks, during the pandemic, we had to learn about supply chains and the shortage of semiconductors. Those tiny computer chips you all out here know very well, smaller than the tip of your finger, that power everything from the lives of your cell phones, cars, dishwashers, satellites, weapon systems. America invented these chips. Don't forget that we invented these chips. And over time, <laughs> some thought it was cheaper to send the manufacturing overseas because labor was cheaper. As a result, when the pandemic shut down chips factories overseas, the prices of everything went up. First time Americans began to realize just how important they were. Unlike my predecessor, I was determined to turn things around, to invest in America, in all America, in all Americans. And that's what we've been doing. In January 2022, Pat came to the White House, where we announced a historic investment to build a state-of-the-art semiconductor factory in Ohio, factories in Ohio. We were joined then by Sherrod Brown, the Ohio senator, who talked about why it's time to bury the phrase Rust Belt. And Pat said at the time, we should start calling it the Silicon Heartland. And it is becoming that. By March of this year, Pat was my guest at the State of the Union, where I, we talked about the 100,000 acres outside of Columbus, where semiconductor manufacturing facility and fabs were being built. 
which I referred to at the time as the field of dreams. And boy, it's turning out to meet people's dreams out there. In August, Senator Kelly and Sherrod Brown got the Chips and Science Act to my desk. It was one of the most significant science and technology investments in our history. By September, I joined Patton, Ohio, and to break ground for the new factory. Within nine months, we're just getting and we're just getting started since the My Chips Science Act was led to partnership with companies investing billions and billions of dollars across the country, bringing semiconductor manufacturing back to America, jobs of the future back to America, including here in Arizona with significant help of Mark Kelly. He I tell you what, I'm so glad this is happening. Those phone calls every 20 minutes were getting old. <laughs> he is committed. In December 2022, I came to Phoenix, where I joined so many of you, as well as the CEO of Apple, Tim Cook, to talk about the historic investments that the Chips and Science Act was delivering to make chips here in Phoenix. Today, Pat is building here on, 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 on another field of dreams. I'm thrilled to announce the latest public-private partnership and one of the largest investments in semiconductors in the United States ever. The landmark, a new landmark agreement under the Chips and Science Act between my administration and Intel for up to $8.5 billion. It's a smart investment. And that's being paired with over $100 billion from Intel, including $30 billion in Arizona and $30 billion in Ohio. It's among the largest private sector investments ever in the history of Ohio and in Arizona. And this historic funding will be used to build new semiconductor fab facilities and modernize, modernize and expand existing ones in Arizona, Ohio, New Mexico, and Oregon. Combined, it will create nearly 20,000, 20,000 construction jobs, many of which will be union jobs. And I've made it real clear. Make no bond made it. Everybody has a right to organize, man, to have their labor rights protected. But look, this announcement will also support 10,000 manufacturing jobs, 3,000 right here in Phoenix, with salaries averaging over $100,000 a year and don't all require college degrees. That's a change. <laughs> For the first time in a long time, many of these facilities won't just manufacture regular semiconductors. They're going to once again begin to make the most sophisticated, advanced, and powerful leading-edge chips. Each chip has — this is — this is — that blows my mind — has trillions of — trillions of tiny features, the width of a strand of human DNA, 40,000 times thinner than a single human hair. They require manufacturing precision down to the size of a single atom. The process is enormous, requires enormous amounts of information and lightning — with lightning speed, they'll produce. And they're — and they're critical to emerging technologies. They're going to power the future economy, like artificial intelligence, quantum computing, 6G communications. And to take everything — make everything faster, lighter, smaller, and more reliable. Folks, it's about time. Even though we invented the most advanced chips, we make zero percent of them today. Zero percent of the most advanced chips today. Nearly all manufacturing of leading-edge chips across the entire industry moved overseas to Asia years ago. That's why today's investment is such a big deal. We will enable advanced semiconductor manufacturing to make a comeback here in America after 40 years. <laughs> it's going to transform the semiconductor industry and create entirely new ecosystems, entirely new research and design and manufacturing and advanced chips in America. By the way, parenthetically, I said we're going to become the manufacturing capital of the world again. People looked at him like I was not. Where the hell's it written saying we're not going to be the manufacturing capital of the world again? We've already created 825,000 new manufacturing jobs, and you're just getting us started. There's not a damn thing America can't do if we set our mind to it. And it's going to put us on track to manufacture 20 percent of the leading — world's leading-edge chips by the end of the decade. And right here in the United States, Intel is committed to net zero greenhouse gases, gas emissions by 2040, and using 100 percent renewable electricity to power these fabs. And there's more, because this isn't just about investing in America. It's about investing in America, the American people as well. 
That's why we're dedicating $50 million of CHIPS funding to partner with Intel and community stakeholders like community colleges, state and local governments, labor unions and universities to train a new generation of workers for the semiconductor industry. That way, people don't have to leave their hometowns to get good-paying jobs and support their families. And here in Arizona, Arizona State University is expanding its engineering program. Catch this. Uh, every time — you guys know this, but every time I say it and I talk about it, it's just astounding to me. It's going to expand their, their engineering to over 10,000 additional students. 10,000 additional engineering students. <laughs> Community colleges are training new technicians and launching free semiconductor technician programs led by Intel employees. Local unions are building training centers for apprenticeships. And Intel is investing in semiconductor education starting as early as high school, so students get hands-on experience and a path to good-paying jobs, whether or not they get to go to college. And the same thing is happening in other states as well. It's all part of my Investing in America agenda, which has attracted $675 billion $675 billion in private sector investments and ignited a manufacturing boom in America, a clean energy boom, a jobs boom, all here in America, finally. Since I took office, America's had the strongest growth of any major economy in the world, nearly 15 million new jobs, the longest stretch of unemployment under 4 percent in 50 years. 450. Growth is strong. Wages are up more than prices. Inflation is down dramatically. We have more to do. I get it. We have more to do. But no question, our plan of delivering for the American people is working now. And since I came to office here in Arizona, because of your investment in the American agenda, we've deployed and developed nearly $8 billion in federal funds to upgrade infrastructure and clean energy. Right here in Arizona, we've created 300,000 new jobs. Let me say that again. In Arizona, 300,000 new jobs. Because I was finally able to beat big pharmaceutical companies. Because Medicare, I've been trying for years, but Medicare now has the power to negotiate lower prescription drug costs for seniors, including 1.4 million seniors right here in Arizona. And to put this in perspective, put this in perspective, Whatever prescription you have made by any American drug manufacturer, jump on Air Force One and they'll fly to any country, any major city in the world, from Toronto to Berlin to Baghdad, anywhere, anywhere around the world. I'll we'll get off the plane, you bring that prescription into that country, you'll be able to buy it for 40 to 60 percent less. It's wrong. So guess what? When we began, began to manufacture, we negotiate with, when I said, look, Medicare buys all these drugs, billions of dollars worth, for, to take care of Medicare Medicaid. Well, guess what? You know how much it costs to make insulin? Anybody know anybody needs insulin? Raise your hand. You're darn right. Well, guess what? It's now 35 bucks a month. You know how much? It was 400 bucks a month. You know how much it costs to make it? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. And they will cap the total out-of-pocket expenses for prescription drugs, all the drugs a senior has to take, all of them, at $2,000, including expensive cancer drugs that cost ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a year. They never have to pay more than $2,000 a year for all the drugs they need. <laughs> but, folks, by the way, not only saves seniors money, it saves taxpayers a significant amount of money. We reduced the consequence of the law I wrote and got passed. We've reached the federal deficit by $160 billion. Hear me? $160 billion. You know why? Medicare doesn't have to pay $400. They have to pay $35 for that prescription, and much, much more. Exorbitant prices. And it's all part of my economic vision for this country. I determined that I was going to build the economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down, because when you do that, the poor have a ladder up, the middle class does well, and the wealthy still do very well. We all do well. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. It's a fundamental break from the trickle-down economics supercharged by my predecessor. On his watch, companies send American jobs overseas for cheaper labor and imported products. We're creating jobs in American and exporting American products. 
Well, my predecessor and his allies in Congress want to go back. In fact, the vast majority of the team on the other side, my Republican friends, didn't vote for the Chips and Science Act. The majority of them didn't. And now they're trying to repeal the Inflation Reduction Act, the most significant action ever on climate. That's going to create hundreds of thousands of jobs, many of them in their own states, in your district, particularly in states like Arizona. That's when my professor, uh, my predecessor was in office. He enacted instead a $2 trillion tax cut where they overwhelmingly benefit the very wealthy and the biggest corporations. By the way, I'm not anti-corporation. I come from the corporate state of America. More corporations are incorporated in Delaware than every other state in the union combined. And I represent them for 36 years. But they can't get greedy. And we want to do this. Here's, here's what he wants to do this again. The bottom line, I want to build a future in America. My predecessor is going to let the future be built in China and other countries, not America because it may be cheaper for those investing. Folks, I promise to be the president of all Americans, whether you voted for me or didn't vote for me. Today's investment helps all Americans in red states and blue states all across America, urban, rural, suburban, and tribal communities. But we're not leaving anyone behind. We're not — if we invented in America, it should be made in America. and include all of America. Folks, let me close with this. I've been determined to make things in this country again. To build manufacturing capacity, as I said, we've created over 800,000 manufacturing jobs, and we're still counting. To make sure we never again are in a position where, during a pandemic, we're relying on other countries to make things that we badly need here at home to be able to go forward. Folks, some folks don't — didn't believe we could do this. But I've made no bones about it. I've said for a long time, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. If we invest in America, we can change the country's future and lead the world again. We are leading the world again. We're proving it's never been a good bet. It's never been a good bet to bet against America. I've spent more time with Xi Jinping, the leader of China, than any other world leader has. And I was with him, traveled 17,000 miles with him when he was vice president and I was vice president before he became the leader. And we're in the Tibetan plateau. And he asked me, he said, can you define America for me? I said, I sure can, in one word. And he looked at me, I said, possibilities, possibilities. We haven't been the only nation in the world that's never — we have come out of every crisis we've ever been in stronger than we went into that crisis. There's nothing beyond our capacity. I've never been more optimistic about our future. We just have to remember who in the hell we are. We're the United States of America. <laughs> And there's nothing beyond our capacity when we work together. So God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. You're the best. You're the best. This is going to transform the country in a way you don't even understand yet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you ready, guys? Thanks, everybody.